The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Uh, hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. Um, this is Friday, May the 20th, and uh, within the context of markets, the Dow had a nice early pop-up. It's giving some of that back. And this is going to be a really important session for a number of reasons. I'm just trying to get this out of the way here. Is it going to do that? All right. So we're looking at the Dow right now up 121 at 31,374. This, this is a special session as far as I'm concerned, just in terms of candles that I look at, in terms of how, um, how we need to resolve today, uh, preferably not going negative, preferably not going to just a plus 40 by um, 1030 this morning but holding steady and then having options expiration, having some kind of a, a rally towards midday. Uh, we'll see what happens. The reason being, within within the context of patterns, see this little candle right here, a little doji candle. What's happened is each one of these candles at potential lows, we saw a Chapman Wave Roman candle with a very long wick. It's a green candle going down to the bottom and then a tiny wick at the top, but the body was half to three quarters above the wick low. And we've seen that a few times. And then we had just a mini one uh, the other day, right there on the 2nd, I think, it was, on the 12th, I mean, of May. And we ran up very nicely, one, two, three bars, and then failed. And then we took out that, uh, that left side low. Yesterday, we went to a lower low. And that says that all of a sudden, the body of these long wick candles is getting smaller and smaller. So yesterday, what we had was, I call it a long-legged doji candle, open and close at about the same price, but ran up quite nicely, ran down quite a lot, and then came back and closed at almost a starting point. And that makes today a swing day in the, in the sense that either it's a reversal candle or it's a failure candle, and it becomes almost like a halfway marker to the downside. So this early rally that started to fail not a good sign, not a good sign at all. And even more important is I would have preferred to see weakness early and then strength. I don't like to see this. We've seen this so often. Early strength starts to fail. Don't like that at all. So I just want to move this to the side so that I can get some kind of sense of my timing because my, um, you know, for some reason I've got the, the, the mics working, but the earphones are not working. Um, all right, let's get on with it. Now the Dow's only up 36. I don't like this at all. Now the S&P is down from its high. The S&P is, let me just type that in. The S&P is up 10. It's still up nicely, up 10. But at 39,111, uh, when the high today was 39,43, uh, what is it, 33 points off the high? Not, not a good sign, not a good sign at all. What we are looking at is the weight of evidence is suggesting that the down move, the down, the trend itself, the tide on the daily chart is still in a down mode. It hasn't been able to reverse significantly to even get a, a buy signal that can be upgraded to a buy mode. The weekly chart, definitely in the sell mode. And I'm watching real closely. We've got, what are we doing? We're, we're, today's the 20th. So we've got until the 31st, which is Tuesday, a week from this coming Tuesday, that's the end of the month. Wow, this candle has so much work to do to start to improve. Will it do that? We'll have to see. So let's go to the QQQ, which now is only up 49 cents at 290.03. This is going to be a very, very important moment because here again, you had a little doji candle and you were above the left side low of 284. Point eighty four that was made on the 12th of um, May. And this arch formation says, whoops, you break that low. That's going to be the dreaded H pattern. You don't want to see another one of those. We've said, seen so many just from the high that was made in, in March at 371. Um, this is the one that had should have had a much larger H pattern, arch formation, held nicely, and then gone to an even bigger one. So the day is young. Let's see what happens. In the meantime, back at the ranch, the IWM, is 
uh, now down 21 cents at 176.34. That has been one of the weaker indices, especially in, in the uh, in the pattern of the weekly chart, where it, it made this arch formation, took it out, and it's almost done a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. It needs a lot of work. Let's go to gold, because gold... Uh, now it's down 9, almost 10 at 1831. If you look at the relationship, uh, look at the pattern. Yeah, we're looking at the left side. That's the daily chart. The middle is the weekly chart. There's this pattern that I call the falling axe arch formation, the falling axe that a re, an upside down one that can form the arch formation if it takes out key support. Well, it has taken the key support level. This Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone has become a repellent zone. I'm watching this closely because if you look at the monthly chart, a lot of work needs to be done in gold to be able to say that the daily has gone from a buy signal, which is not even at right now. Stochastic's only at 29%. The MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. The weekly chart is still in negative mode. Even the nine period has gone under the 14-period moving average. So the monthly chart is saying, please, shorter term, help me, help me. I need you to get to the 1884 level, preferably 1902, within about a week to say that you've got a buy signal that goes to a buy mode because that dollar, um, the dollar itself held support at the low of yesterday. It had 105.01, a, a multi-year high. It's in the pattern that I've been talking about, this cup formation. It's only in leg C in the monthly, and that should go in the chap wave, which should still go to a leg D. But it's at a leg, I'm calling it, I'm still calling it a leg F, probably a peak F by the end of the day today in the weekly chart. But the technicals actually are pretty darn good for the dollar. And that's saying dollar is still the place that money is, is flowing to. If you look at the EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair, yes, it's gone to a leg A. Very nice single leg move, but it hasn't yet, after four weeks of breaking underneath the low that was made back in 2020, March of 2020, at 1.0636, runs up to 1.239, peak D, uh, back in January, I think it was 2021, and then double tops fading at the, below that high. I used the plumb line. I said left side, right side should see a price time match so that round about April of 2022, we should be testing the 1.0636.4 level. Well, it took one, uh, two weeks later, and then it plunged down below it. And now my rule of thumb with the arch formation is that within two, maybe three bars, you need to see a close above the left side low of importance, that's the 1.0636. It hasn't done it yet. It is at 1.0054. Uh, uh, let's see, I just want, I want my uh, engineer to be helping me here to tell me when I'm going to have to wrap this up for this particular segment. But if you look at the USD JPY, and that is the yen currency pair, dollar yen, uh, it's pulled back from a peak D in the weekly chart, but not very much. It's still very good technically. And dollar and yen seem to go in the same trajectory very often. So uh, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, back to the next. What we're all looking at here is silver. It's silver, SI. Silver is uh, down 21 cents, 21.69. It's gone to a leg, it's stalled at the foot of your grouping area. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. We're back. So we're looking at silver. Silver, silver's pulled back a little bit. Most importantly, what we're looking at here is there are a couple of things. Look at the VIX index. Look, here we go. VIX index. Why is that? Oh, right, here we go. The volatility index, VIX.X, uh, trading down 66 cents at 28.69. This is, there is some evidence here that the volatility index, I'm going to see where it closes today, Friday, because these weekly charts, most of the time on a Friday, except for uh, a couple of Fridays ago, it closed almost at the high of that week. Look at this candle right here. But for the past three weeks, even though the market's been coming down, the Friday close on the VIX index has been uh, fairly weak. So even more important than that is when we're looking at uh, when we're looking at the implication of the volatility index being in the 28s, up in the 26 to 28 level, that is really high. That just suggests that fund managers are really buying volatility. Um, uh, the security of having some kind of position in the volatility index because they don't like what's going on in the market. Don't blame them. This is that's the reason why for subscribers we built up a big cash position. I, I don't want to be messing around here um, with with getting stocks that look great and then boom they get smacked. But at the same time, I think we're getting closer and closer to where, let's just go to ARKK. Is usually, I just use this as a benchmark. We don't have anything right now. I've just wanted to avoid it at this particular point. It's down 13 cents at 42.93. This is the ARK Innovation ETF. I think when this really starts to pick up legs, if it hasn't folded by uh, before then, by going under 35.10, I suggest if it makes a lower lows uh, in, in May, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure for um, this particular fund to kind of cease and desist because a lot of people will be getting their money out. But uh, that is closing on, on under, it's, I'd say, 33, 35.10 was the left side low of about seven days ago. And you can see this weekly chart, Truff G. There's every evidence here that suggests overbought condition for the unbalanced volume. There's a lot of evidence that says just in this particular phase, there should be at least a relief rally in the weekly chart. We've only had a couple on the way down since the, the big consolidation back going into the November high. Um, let's call it the, the last high, not the all-time high, which is in uh, November of 2021 at 125.86. Let's call it the um, the week of the 12th of 
Oh, wait, does that make sense? 125. Oh, it was February. I, I put March, but it should be February of 2021 at 159.70. And, uh, and now we're looking at my, I wrote this incorrectly. Sorry, folks. I, I need to change something. 159.70. I wrote incorrectly. 159.70. There we go. 159.70 was the all time high. I mean, 159 down to 35. You're not doing your subscribers uh, a favor um, for the people that are in invested in your um, fund. If you're going to go down, especially when it consolidated during that period uh, going into February, uh, where it was consolidating between about 100 to 130s down to 100 or let's say 110, and then it broke down. You, you, you really can't just keep saying, oh, I love the stock. I love the stock. I'm, I'm buying hand, hand over fist. I'm buying it. And then the thing goes down even further. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's right. But I do think that we've got to keep our eye on this. Uh, the pattern right now for the V-shaped pattern says if the ARC innovation on a short term basis at 44.02 takes out 42 closes under 42 in the next day or two. That's really not very good action at all. So now what I want you to do is uh, questions have come in. Let me start doing some of the questions. Uh, let me just see what this one is. Um, could you try to explain why the US dollar peaking out is positive for the precious metals and stay cool? Yep, it's going to get hot, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now, as far as I'm concerned, my eye for a long, well, we've been long for subscribers to opening call along the dollar for quite a few years from the 90.07 level via the UUP. Um, I don't think that this is the big move that says it's all over for the dollar because I think this, if I'm correct, I've still got this only leg C in the Chapman Wave methodology and in the Chapman Wave methodology, um, a buy signal that goes to a buy mode invariably, let me just get there, invariably should do this. There we go. So I always try to identify a low bar. From the low bar, we try to uh, pick out higher, higher highs. At the same time, I alphabetize sequentially all the peaks to the upside. It can go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's never an H. You have to see that maybe there's a recycle or the top is at G or it's gone through a G slash C. You've got an alternate account. But the objective in the chapter is to go from a buy signal to a buy mode. And if you call it a buy mode at any point um, above peak A, you should be saying that it's going to go to at least four higher peaks, to a peak D, and then other things can happen. Well, if that's the case, the dollar is in leg C. It still has to make its peak C. It's holding with tremendous strength at this particular point. It's still in the consolidation pattern between the breakout on the uh, 27th of April with a low of 102.22, the high of 105.01, on um, May the 13th, and here it is at 103. It's still consolidating. If it starts to trade at 101.5 or lower, that says, oh, okay, now you've got a sell signal in the daily chart. I don't know yet whether it will be a sell mode, but it will be a sell signal. And that implies that all the other currencies, remember, I try to think of all these things separately. Dolly is the dollar. Bondi is bonds. Let me just do this. The bondy is bond. TLT is down at the bottom, trying to establish some kind of a low. It did a left side, right side price tie match, uh, but it hasn't yet shown any strength to be able to get the yields down. Vixi is something completely independent. It's up near these highs that were, you're looking at levels that were almost at the invasion of Ukraine. And, um, and you're looking at yields still very high. So I want you to think of all these things separately. Think of the VIX index as an insurance policy at this particular point. Yes, a fear factor, but an insurance policy. Think of the dollar as the premier currency around the world. Think of Goldie, Goldie as something, I'm, I'm not talking about gold as an inflationary hedge or anything like that. At this particular point, try to think of it separately. Think of gold as its own unit. It is broken underneath this rising Chapman wave in, uh, um, right here, this 
inside track right there. I should make that pink. I wanted it blue so that you can see it better. Pink kind of blends in too much. Uh, but at this particular point, the most the aspect that is really significant is that gold is at a spectacular move over the last couple of years. And now it's doing, for the last year, it's been a digestive phase, holding extremely well. If you want to put them all together with the dollar screaming at multi-year highs, gold is not at multi-year lows. Think of them separately. Think of your gold package as something that has to do, if you look at GDX, I think you get a better sense of what's going on. The GDX is the gold miners. Gold Miner ETF. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. And uh, Basil Chapman, the Dow has come back a little bit. It's up 38. s and is up 15. Actually, the s and is holding way better. Uh, we're looking at uh, the CELH. There's a question in the uh, Tiger YouTube. That's Celsius Holdings. I believe I once had this notated. I don't have it now. Uh, leg A, peak A. Leg B, peak B. Leg C, peak C. And leg D, peak D. Okay, so the question is, I'm not sure what the question is. I uh, made a peak D yesterday, yep, hitting the 200 period exponential moving average on 228. It also hit the 200 EMA, but only at peak C and back down. Is it time to sell half position or all? So let, let me just say this. Um, I wish I had the full notation here because I really want you to see. This is a brand new leg A in the uh, weekly chart. So, yes, I, your analysis is 100% correct. And what I'm going to say, the fact that it went, it got so close, my rule of thumb with the 200-period uh, exponential moving average, is, especially in the daily charts, is that if the price gets very close after being under it for quite a while, but getting closer and closer, 
there's a really good chance that it's going to break above it. Well, this did break above it, and now it's hugging it at 60.00 at this moment, uh, unchanged. What we're looking at is the high yesterday was, I'm, I'm pleased you said you're already in it. What should you do? 63.10. Now, I wish I could tell what it is, Celsius Holdings. Uh, you know, I, I remember distinctly typing this out at some point because uh, Celsius, uh, I'd originally spelt it with the Celsius Holdings, with a C, cell C with a C there instead of an S, I believe. And that's uh, that, this is stuck in my mind. So I'm going to do right here, I'm going to say, maybe you'll tell me, um, what what does, I'll just type it in, what does Celsius holding do? Very simple. And it says, operates as a holding company, the company through subsidiaries provides thermogenetic, thermogenic calorie burning beverages. Oh, I remember this now. The company markets its beverages, um, um, beverage multiple multiple channels, including grocery, drug, convenience stores, and, and I remember thinking, oh, it's one of those areas that's kind of in the in the almost like a vitamin area, but it's it's in the sub normal um, grocery type thing. Uh, just and the reason why I remember it is because I remember being in um, back in Rhode Island, Newport, Rhode Island years ago, and I can't remember if I had my cell phone on, my wife was looking at some of these, and we were in this, um, like a, not a, a, a used clothing store, because this particular one has very unusual things, and we were just fascinated, and I remember having my cell phone, and there was a stock that we had looked at, which, which was in the, in the, in the same type of area, and, um, I then put it on as a buy the next day, because it was doing so well, and that just stuck me. I don't know why these things are coming up right now. But all I can say is, having hit the 200 period moving average and like glue, it's just an amazing thing. Let me just open this up to show you something fascinating. I, I don't know. I'm just opening up. You and I in the same situation. There are. Look at this. That 200 period moving average was tremendous resistance all the way back to November, December of 2021. And then it broke above it, but it couldn't really hold above it. It held... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sessions back in December, around about the 23rd, and then broke down on the 4th of January, and that was it. And it plummeted down to 40, so it was in the uh, 74 area, uh, is that correct? Yes, and then it plummets, gets cut almost in half, goes down to 39, and the rally is peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, right at exactly on the 200 period moving average, and then it tries to rally and break above it, it can't, it pulls back, pulls back. I think this is the move that says with the MACD good and the stochastic at 86% and flat, above 80% and flat, I like. I'm gonna to say to you, no, I like it. And your question was, um, is it time to sell half the position or all of it? And I'm just going to say, just because you asked me the question, I'm going to say, take a little bit off, because first of all, congratulations, you were in it, and you, it's held extremely well. I don't want to be messing with it, because, hey, it's in a buy mode, and it stopped at a leg D. We don't know if it's a peak D until the end of the day. It probably is. But that weekly chart has really improved a lot. MACD is good. Stochastic's improving at 51%. Beautiful unbalanced volume V-shaped pattern. I'm going to say, because you asked me the question, take a little bit off. Since you would have taken half off, I'm going to say take a little bit off, and why not for your own comfort, if it goes under, it might be two points at this stage, for you it might be too much, because you're saying, hey, I could get two points right now, why should I wait two points, and if it goes below that, I get out. I'm just going to say to you, because it's acting so well in this particular market environment, I would, I would say have another exit on some of the position, at 57.50. And I, let's look at it again Monday, Tuesday. In fact, I'll put it in here as C E L H. Good eye. I think you're fabulous. You got it. Uh, <clears throat> I just don't think you should take half off right now. This is my opinion. You asked for it. 
I'm giving it to you. <laughs> so with that said, I'm going to say yes right now. Take a little bit off, but just a little bit off. And another part of it should have a stop. Today's low is 58.66. It's trading at 59.66. If you're really getting, getting a little bit nervous and say, I don't want to give up these gains. These days you've got to work so hard for gains. You could take a little, make a 58. 57.98 is, is another stop. And then maybe a little bit lower, and then you. And I suspect that it's going to hold well, and that by Tuesday or Wednesday, it'll. Tr I could be totally wrong. It is a leg D, peak D. Other things can happen, but the way it's acting right now, I wouldn't be surprised if it breaks 63.10 sometime uh, by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. The way it's acting, it's it's doing very nicely. All right. With that said, um, I see a very yeah beverages. So that's what I'm saying. It's in this kind of niche area. Uh, it seems to be doing well at this particular moment. I don't want to get in the way of something that's acting well. Uh, so that's all I'm saying to you. Take a tad off. Uh, Kur, do you know Kur, Coursera Online Learning? <clears throat> no. C is that C-O-U-R? Yep, C-O-U-R. Yeah, be careful. This is um, Coursera Inc. No, I, this has got the same pattern that we're looking at in so many of the indices that have tried to come off the low. But what I would say to you is this is the moment if it's going to rally at all and the MACD hasn't crossed positive, it's real close. So if you're asking me for my outlook, look, looking out towards the end of the summer, this has a lot of work to do. It was an IPO about a year ago. It screamed up to the 60s and then plummeted down to the recent low in the 13 area. Here it is at 1570. What I am going to say to you, the person who asked me, likes to get bigger positions. I mean, not bigger price-wise. I'm talking about positions that he adds to over a period of time, looking at the bigger picture. I'm going to say to you, it's in an area that says it's a, trying to establish a low the low should have had either yesterday or today moving at up to 16.28. So that's lagging. But I would suggest to you to just start a small position right now. And that small position says, um, I can add to it, I can subtract, but give it just a little bit of, uh, give it a little bit uh, of room. 15.70, in your case, I'd say start a little position. I would, I would actually exit it if it broke a point below that. That's a, that's a big percentage gain at loss. Um, you can make it smaller, but just for the moment, give it a point. But normally I would- Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, 
trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi everyone, Basil Schaffer, we're back and we're looking at the Dow up eight and the S&P is up nine. Actually, the S&P is the one that's holding up better here. A, a question I got, and I wanted to do these. So the, the, the FANG type stocks, let's go through this. We've got Facebook right now, uh, Facebook, social media, of course they call them, uh, they call it Meta right now. I have a tough time with that. 383.33 was the September high. It's plummeted down to the low just the other day of 169. Uh, round number low. I, I forgot to type it in. I saw it then I completely forgot to type it in. 169 round number low. Let's see if that's going to hold. And one of the things that I've been looking at over the uh, period of time for, for months now, I've been saying that the NASDAQ, the FANG type stocks are due for a much deeper correction. And when they complete that, I would not be surprised, you know, where people always say, oh, things are done. But actually what happens if you go back in history, you'll find that, this, that the real sexy stocks that were once leaders very often come back to be leaders. Uh, they don't just go away. Maybe one or two in the sector will, but uh, generally like a Google alphabet, a Google will stay as a leader, even though it's in a big digestive phase, Amazon, same thing. So you can see that Facebook's really struggling. It had a beautiful gap up. I, I can't remember in the news or was that the earnings on the 27th and then the 28th, it gaps up when it made the round number low on the 27th of April. And then it gapped up huge. It went to the 220s. Then it plummeted back to the one, uh, 185, I think it was. Yeah, 184.78 level has a bounce and now it's gone sideways. I think these are going to take longer. If you put this, so the question is, uh, what about Facebook? And my answer is, in terms of Facebook, I would just suggest at this particular point that Facebook's going through a really big digestive phase. First decent consolidation it's had, or I would say, and just look at this chart, ever since the one from 218 back in July of 2013, 2018, and went down to 123. That was a big, big move. Well, this has gone from 383 down to a low of 169. That's also, that's, yeah, I mean, that's more than cut in half. So, uh, as, as far as I can tell, this is going to continue based on the monthly chart. It's got the Chapman Wave Inside Track Propellant Zone. It's held there. It's got Fibonacci numbers. It's got all sorts of things. I just think it needs more time. On a short term basis, it can have a good rally, but I think looking at on the weekly chart, it could have a limited upside, but it might at this particular point have a more limited downside uh, as it tries to come back and retest 169. If you're looking at Amazon, Amazon, same thing. Amazon, same patterns, the ones we've been looking at, single leg A up, breaks down, hasn't broken to the left side low of uh, 2048.11. Let me just type that in. 208, 208, 208, 208.11. And um, trading right now, 21.93. Look at the weekly chart, needs a lot of work. Look at the monthly chart, needs a lot of work. So all of these stocks, Google, same thing. I'm using the um, Google. I'm using the same thinking here that says Google goes from 3,042 3, round number high, uh, week of the uh, second, uh, week of the fourth of, of February. No, whatever. Yeah, week of the fourth of February, and it's trading now at two two one zero. That's a huge hit for a major company. And 
Google will be back with something spectacular, but this particular point needs a lot of room. If one wanted to build a position in UUP for leg uh, D up, uh, UUP, which is the, this is what real long from way back in the, in the 23s hit. Of course, when you're talking about a currency, these are big percentage numbers, but not necessarily if it was a stock. Uh, it hit 28.07 on the 13th of May, 28.07. So it's had a fabulous run. It needs a bit of a breather now, pulling back. Let's hold off. If you want to get the monthly chart to go to a leg D to retest the 28.90 major high of March of 2020, I think you need to just hold it for the moment. I, I th let's see what it does. If, if it does go into the 27.20, I always say it for today. Let's take the first. We've taken just one little bit off at 96 in the dollar. Let's see if we're taking off a little bit today. I, I don't know if I really want to do that. I'll have to do some work over the weekend. I didn't just want to do it arbitrarily because it's here and it feels good. I want to do some analysis with it. But certainly if it starts to close under 2720, then you have to wait a little bit and then we'll see what happens. And then we want to see, does, remember I wanted the separation of gold and all these things. Not that they don't work and not that they can't work uh, together with the, the complexity of the puzzle that we're looking at here. Um, but I like to think of them separately. Uh, Bondi, for bonds. Goldie for gold. Dolly for dollar. Um, Crudy for crude oil. And uh, the, uh, what is a VIXI for the VIX index. Yes, they do work together, but if you think of it independently, it kind of helps you to put it all in perspective. Because if you're saying to yourself, oh, um, gold should rally, what? How do you know how much it'll rally? After all, gold screened up to uh, to a high. Look at this. Gold screened up to a high back in um, around July, August of 2020. And it went to the almost the 2000 level, uh, not over 2000, and then pulled back. And then went right back and made a slightly lower high. And yet, in all this time, the, the dollar... They don't usually go in the same trajectory. Look at the dollar. The dollar was just screaming to the upside. So I, I think it's a very important to th think of them as separate. Uh, oily for oil. Yep, oily for oil. Oh, cr not crudy, but oily. Sorry, you're absolutely right. Oily for oil. We didn't want to be crude. So oily is trading up 37 cents. All right, let's get out of this. What we want you to talk about right now is what about the OIH? The OIH um, also has had a decent rally, it's stuck in a range, but the oil service ETF is is in a, in a leg D in the, in the monthly chart. But if you look at the monthly chart, unlike oil, um, this has once been to the 1,000, <laughs> it's unbelievable, 1,160 was the high back in July of 2014. So that's what I'm saying, even in the sectors and, the, and what you're looking at, Try to look at them as an individual piece of analysis that you have to do. You can't harken back to those old levels. Remember, crude oil is close to where it was in those you know, the the uh, Georgian invasion from uh, with Russia. It, it just goes on and on. But the the oil service is a little bit different. It's a different sector. Try to think of them as as separate sectors. Now, what I am looking at here is uh, Apple was another one. Apple. Yep, uh, Apple is uh, for our, um, yeah, so for our YouTuber, um, 138.02. This is what I'm saying, that I don't see a major rally in, the, in all the indices to go to all-time highs, not yet. But if you look at the consolidation, the rotation of the, ro the consolidations, it seems as if the Dow is in a way playing a little bit of a catch up, although it's still holding best of all. And you're just waiting for some of these, like Apple go, is a part of the Dow, it's part of the N N NDX 100, it's part of the S&P. It's really important. And that's a drag because if you're looking at the, um, if you're looking at the monthly chart, it's only now gone below the 43 moving average for the close, closing problem to below the 43 moving average since the last time we broke under the same month, went above it March of 2020.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, didn't get a message. Uh, wait. wait, we're in a break now, right? Oh, I'm on? Uh, we're back on, I'm sorry, I've got everything messed up today. Uh, I will fix it up uh, when we wrap up the show. But I, I've I got the wrong earphone plug in. Just let's do this, we've got a wrapping up time. I want to do this real quickly. Let's go to the general markets and I'm going to tell you what I'm looking at here. If the Dow today takes out yesterday's low and closes below yesterday's low, that is that is not a good sign because on this particular doji candle, you've got yourself not even two, not even three days, it's two days, you can break and close below it. But wow, within two to three sessions of the bar, that is two bars, it's got to close nicely above the high that was made yesterday, which is 31,016. So, so far, we did go, I believe that we're out of it. We did go long. We had a, a, quite a, once again, we had, we've, we've gone long almost every day on the diamonds and we've had, we've made money on the upside. Uh, today, I'm, I, I, don't, I can't talk about it because I'm, I'm right in the middle of everything. I believe we did get stopped out, a very tight stop that we had. Um, what we're looking at here is within the context of markets, Remember I said the VIX index, this is going to be key. If the VIX index 
starts to pull back. I don't want a Friday close at the high of the week. Well, that would be all the way in the 32s but, or even higher. But at this particular point at 29.22, the Dow is down 138, the S&P is down 12. As I said, we've built up this cash position. I don't want to get too carried away to the upside. We'll have to see what happens over the weekend into Monday. But if by Tuesday the VIX index isn't pulling back and underneath 26, preferably 25.30 or lower, but instead he's up in this 29.30 area, that is just giving us tremendous pressure for selling. 